There we go. All right. Did it again, folks. Forgot to turn the audio on. <laughs> there we go. All right. Always forget to do that. I was surprised that I left the camera on, things like that. That's okay. But now we got audio. All right. So audio's back on. I wish I could catch that a whole lot sooner. Once again, good morning. And we're cornerstone in the Pan Pentecostal. And uh, we will be at the, the river tonight, slash Burn number two, in Cambridge, Maryland. In fact, uh, yeah, in Cambridge, Maryland. And uh, so someone's been coming out on Sunday nights, and so we should be wanting questions and answers, so we've been doing that. And so we'll do that tonight, and we might even have a message. As led by God's Holy Spirit. It's always good to be led by God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me just disconnect this other thing here, make sure we're right. The people on YouTube are going to have fun with this one uh, because once again, I have some dead silence there for a little bit, but that happens. Okay. Now, this Thursday, we will have our study. We'll start a study in uh, Song of Solomon, and that's at 7 p.m. Sanctuary number two at the river in Cambridge, Maryland, 415 Academy Street. But today's message is Satan wants a piece of you and me. He wants a piece of you. And me, and even more than that. And so let's look at some things in God's Word this morning. And this is a topical message. We, we're going to go all over the place in the Word of God. Uh, mostly, you know, quite a bit in the New Testament, of course. But uh, we'll be doing that. And the first scripture that we're going to have this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Oh, I, indeed. By the way, like the picture of the lion? That's something else. That's a picture by Charles Foster over 100 years ago, I believe. Uh, almost 100 years ago. But uh, that's some line you got there. But be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a lion. He's gonna, he wants to devour you and me. How does this happen? Well, we are led into sin, not necessarily by him, but we are led into sin, as the epistle of James points out, by our own lusts. And so that leads us into sin. And so if we do not take care of that, and if we let it go, if we let it fester and so on, Satan's going to be on the prowl to chew us up. And he's going to be after us one way or another. So uh, you got to be sober. How do you be sober? Well, Ask God to show you if there's anything that you need to purge from your life. Uh, listen carefully to born-again Christians that are more conservative than you in their walk and try to find out why and look at the scriptures, search the scriptures and so on and see if God might be speaking to your heart. But go by the scriptures and go by the leading of God's Holy Spirit. Now, so he goes about as a roaring lion, and he wants to devour people, but he takes a piece at a time sometimes. It's piece by piece, piece by piece. And one of the pieces that he takes is your mind uh, at first. Not at first necessarily, but it does start a mind quite a bit. And so now we have a scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. But I am apprehensive that somehow or other, as the serpent by his cunning deceived Eve, Eve, your thoughts may be turned aside from single-hearted devotion to Christ. And that's from the Williams translation. I use that because that brought out the intent of the Greek more uh, based upon the context and all that. Paul was apprehensive for the Corinthian church uh, because uh, they were... Is they had troubles, basically. If you read First Corinthians, uh, his, that first epistle in our Bible, 2 Corinthians, you see that they had many problems, so on, and they were just swayed this way and that way, and they were taking sides. I'm of Apollos, I'm of Paul, uh, I'm of Cephas, and so on. I belong with Jesus, you know. I'm going to listen to him. And, you know, they're acting superficial in that line. And so you got to be very careful. And... Uh, but your minds, your mind, my mind has been described as the battlefield of Satan. And so uh, we want to make sure that we want to have things out of our mind that are displeasing to God. 
and that we want to keep things there, well, we put things there that are pleasing to God. So uh, we need to, like it says in one passage of Scripture, to take every thought captive, every thought captive, and to uh, have the mind of Christ. <laughs> I'm trying to work this stuff here, and it didn't take off the lead image. I'm trying to get us back on camera. Sorry, folks. Excuse me one minute here. The lead image is supposed to be off. I'm going to see what we can go here and uh, make sure here. Sorry about that. I actually need a lot of help sometimes. I'm going to make a transition here. Nope, we got that image back on there. All right, let me redo the video capture. All right, we got a malfunction in the system this morning. <laughs> Ain't that great? All right. Let me just take some of this stuff off. Sorry about that, folks. Hang on here. We got lots of problems. In fact, let me tell you right now, this is how it happens. Now, last Sunday's message was when the enemy attacks and you got to take decisive action and so on. And uh, different things were brought up. We had a roof problem here. And so we asked for a contractor to come. And I specifically said, do not. Do not come on a Sunday. All right? Well, guess what's here? <laughs> They're here, okay? I'm trying to get this line off of here. Okay, maybe we'll just have to, maybe that will just go away after a while. I don't know. He's trying to attack. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to attack me. All right, well, let me get, uh, let me get back to Corinthians here. And, uh, where's Peter? Oh, okay. There we go. I got the wrong. Here we go. There we go. All right. Now, this should be able to work now. All right. Sorry about that, folks. Like I say, I, I really need some help. I really do. I pray for help, and I pray for help, and I pray for help. There we go. All right. So, now less uh, our mind is a battlefield of Satan. And... The thing is, we have got to yield our mind to the Lord all the time. In other words, David, by the Spirit, said over in Psalm 19. I think Psalm 19. It might not be Psalm 19. Uh, it was another Psalm whereby he was concerned about presumptuous thinking. And he was concerned about the thoughts of his heart and his mind. And may the thoughts of my mind and the intents of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Yahweh. And so this is the attitude that we should have at all times. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, like I said, he's going to go about, say he's going about as a roaring lion, seeking who may, he may devour. But he might just take a piece at a time, and usually it starts with your mind. And so you want to be thinking about what God says in his word and reshape your thinking not to conform with the world. We'll have that shortly in a minute here, probably. Not to conform with the world, but to conform with the image of Christ. We'll get to that later on. Now, along with this too, another piece that we like to have is your soul. That is the seat, that is the place of your affections. And that's where your desires lay. And so, be careful. You don't want Satan to get a hold of your soul. And now, let's look at what Jesus said to Peter after Peter rebuked him in Mark 8, verses 31 to 33. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and after three days rise again. He spoke this word openly, and then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned around and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. Now, surely the word soul is not there, but you see, Peter's desire was along the lines of the world. The disciples looked at Jesus as their leader, the one that they loved and so on. And for him to, to be tortured and put on a cross and so on, that was beyond their thinking. And besides, they felt he was the Messiah. And so their Messiah is going to be hanging from a cross? You're kidding. No, this cannot be. But yet, they did not understand why Christ came, why the Messiah came. Like we said before in some other messages, uh, 
down through the years, even though Adam and Eve were told this great story right from Jesus himself about the Messiah, that idea was changed over the course of time because mankind began to focus upon their trouble, their toils, and so on. And so instead of having a Messiah coming to take us away from our sin, to save us from our sins, uh, they have a Messiah that's going to come and rule and reign, which is also true. But they focused upon that. And so by the time Christ came along, most Jews were looking for a Messiah that was going to just take over and have Rome stop its rule over Israel, over Judah, and so on. And uh, Judah will, will flourish again and so on. That was the type of Messiah they're looking for. Now, we got to watch out for a soul. We have to have the same type of soul Christ had. Christ died to take away our sins. We should live for him that in such a way that we die to ourselves and that we want to take on his characteristics. We want to take on his very personality and be like him at all times. And so this is what we want to aim for. Amen. Now, the next piece that Satan might just want to have <laughs> is your spiritual nose. Now, it was a couple of weeks ago, we had the message, every Christian ought to have a mighty big nose, okay? And so, over in Luke 12, verse 56, he rebukes some of the religious leaders because they could not discern the signs of the times. He says in 1256 of Luke, Hypocrites! You can discern the face of the sky and the earth, but how is it that you cannot discern this time? And so he rebuked them. You know, they, they, they were able to tell when it was going to rain, when it's going to storm, and so on. But the thing is, they were incapable of knowing the signs of the times. And like we just said, that one of the signs, the signs point to the fact that the Messiah would come during that time. And, of course, they were, they kept thinking, well, he's going to save us from Rome and so on and all that. But the Jews did not listen to Jesus Christ for the most part. Some did. That's why, that's where the disciples came from. They were Jewish. And so, and when we say disciples, not just the 12 apostles, but other people too, uh, men and women, and probably some children too, no doubt. And so uh, uh, there are disciples that were of the Jewish realm, and uh, they listened, but most other Jews did not. And of course, uh, what happened was is that the temple was destroyed 40 years later. And the Lord was trying to point that out, that signs of the time, you know, you're going to reject me. Well, your house is going to be left to you desolate because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. So, uh, that is your spiritual nose, basically discerning, and we talked about that the other time. You got to be able to sense not just what you, what is bad or good, but also sense people's spirit and so on. And there is the gift of discerning of spirits, and there's the office of that. But every Christian has that level, and some people say, "Well, that's judging. That's the good type of judging, my friend." We are allowed to judge in certain ways. In fact, it's our duty. Uh, this thing about not judging is a ploy of the devil for Christians to stop taking responsibility and just lay back and, well, if they're going to sin, let them sin, or it doesn't bother me. You know, if someone sins, it doesn't affect me. Friend, it affects everyone. Amen. So one person sins, it affects everyone. Now, of course, now we got now your your mind, your soul, and your spiritual nose. Now, if I could find the right passage now, uh, we get to your spiritual eyes. And that's over in Luke chapter 11, verses 34 to 38. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body also is full of darkness. Therefore take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light, as when the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. 
this darkness comes in in various ways. Sometimes people think what they hear from the denominations, from the religion, and so on, or we want to say religion, uh, and so on, their their branch of Christianity, uh, they take it as absolute truth. My friend, please get into the Word of God and know the Word of God. Get a good translation and get into God's Word. And also, what do you focus your spiritual eyes upon? Uh, focus upon the fact that Christ is coming back. And focus upon the fact that he is present with you. If you're saved, he's right there. And he wants to guide direct you. He wants to meet your needs. But he also wants you to let him train you, uh, directed by his Holy Spirit, according to his word. So uh, focus your spiritual eyes upon the right things. There's many distractions in our time. Now I've got to keep on flying here because we want to talk more in the positive realm and get back to each of these in the next portion. And the next one is going to be the body. The body. Now, he'll come after your body too. And for that, I have Job 2 verses 4 to 5. So Satan answered Yavah and said, Skin for skin! Yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and flesh, and he will surely curse you to your face. Boy, nasty, isn't he? <laughs> Terrible. But this is what happens sometimes, too. Now, sometimes you can't avoid what happens to your body. Many times you can. Uh, but there, let me. there's probably three levels here, okay? Number one, there's things that you and I cannot avoid. Uh, we all get sick and so on. And that happens. And sometimes Satan might just have a hand in that. That's true. Also, some people don't take care of their body. Now, if you're a born-again Christian, understand that your body is what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. So you want to keep the temple of God's Holy Spirit in good shape. Amen. The best possible shape. And so that's what you want to concentrate upon. Then sometimes what happens is, is that if we dabble in sin, we can get physically sick. Uh, and there's a message on my first page of messages of Sapphire Streams that sin can affect your physical body. It can affect your health. If you harbor bitterness, uh, that's going to affect your body after a while. It gets in your soul, it gets in your body, and you, different things happen over the course of time. So uh, you got to be careful because Satan is your adversary. He's your accuser. If you do not take care of sin and any sinful condition as you should, then rest assured the adversary is out there and he's going to touch you in certain ways. Oh, I'm a Christian. He can't touch me. You step out of the will of God, Satan will touch you. you know? Satan will touch you. So uh, be very careful, my friend. And then also, let's get even deeper here now. Satan will go after your heart. And that is over in Acts chapter 5, verse 3. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? And keep back part of the price of the land for yourself. All right. So that was in the early church, by the way. By the way, people look at the New Testament. God is so loving. God is so kind. God is so sweet. He's so long-suffering. Yes, he is. But if you read what happened over in Acts chapter 5, boom. Anna and Sapphira, they saw other Christians sell property and bring them money before the apostles, and so on. And some people, of course, are oohing on, and so on. And, uh, and they, oh, look at that. Look how much they gave. Don't ever do that, okay? Don't ever do that. But, uh, so Anna, as far as saw that, so, uh, okay, but we want some admiration, too. We want some recognition, too. So we'll go ahead and sell our land, but we're going to give just a portion to the church, and we'll say, if that's all of it, yes. So in other words, let's say they sold it for 20000 in our money, 
and they brought before the church 10,000, and they kept 10,000. But they told the apostles, yeah, we sold it for $10,000, and we're giving it all to the body of Christ, so you can take care of the poor, or whatever you got to do. And Peter was able to sense that by the Holy Spirit. He knew that was a lie, and he rebuked the headlines. And he said, you're going to die. Yeah, you're going to fall over dead. And, of course, that's exactly what happened. This is under grace, by the way. This is under the realm of grace. And this still happens every now and then. People just don't give God, you can say, the credit in this case. Uh, they don't recognize the hand of God. Some people don't. Some people do. But you got to be careful. Satan will try to grab a hold of your heart. And then once he gets a piece of that, that he'll fill it. And then after a while, he might just have you all the way. And when we say all the way, you got to be very careful. we got to be very, very careful that we do not lose our relationship with Jesus Christ. And for that, I want to go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which Yavah God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree in the garden? And, of course, you know what happened from there. But here, right there, Satan's there in the garden. And as Eve partook of the fruit, disobeyed God, and then Adam purposely did it, there went their close relationship with Yavah God. They were able to see him. Imagine that. They were walking with him and talking with him all the time. But, of course, after sin came in, that was disrupted. And they could no longer see Yavah God walk in the garden. So uh, that that's very sad, very sad. And we don't want that to happen at all. Don't want that to happen at all. We want to be able to walk with the Lord at all times. And of course, uh, we, like we said before, if you notice any, what should I say, dwindling in your spiritual walk, draw nigh to God. Amen. And seek God's favor. Ask God, is there something wrong? Uh, do I have to take care of something? And uh, let him speak to your heart and deal deal with whatever he says to you. Now, this, let's get to the second portion where we take care of these things for sure. And I just touched upon something, didn't I? Okay, draw not to God. Amen. James chapter 4, verse 7. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, this is an ongoing process. Uh, there's another passage I like to speak on sometimes. It's up there already. But like to mention somewhere in Timothy, I believe it is, whereby we have to rebel against sin. Actually, rebel against sin. And so we got to, re first of all, submit ourselves to God. Not to anything else. Not to, uh, okay, I'm going to read these good books by written by this Christian. I don't know why people do this stuff. I mean, I think maybe I do, but instead of reading the Word of God, they'll go ahead and read other things, and it takes away from their time with the actual Word of God. Or they'll listen to other preachers and so on, and they just spend their time doing that, but they don't sit before the feet of Jesus and ask Him to open up the Word of God for them. Uh, they don't take that time, and they should do that. So you submit yourself to God, and then you resist the devil. Now, we talked about temptation before. Foundationally, yes, we are tempted, as the epistle of James says, when we are our own lust inside of us, uh, are attracted to certain things. But what happens sometimes, and if we just linger in that realm, then Satan is there, and his demons, and they will try to amplify that desire. I've got to think, for example, one more time about David. When he decided to stay home, instead of going out to war like he was supposed to do, he decided to stay home. And right there was a problem. But then he goes on the roof and he sees Lady taking a bath. You know, all right, he saw that. Maybe, I'm sure that attracted him. But then right there, that should be cut off and he should just turn around by God's help. Now, we can do that now more powerfully because Christ lives within us. But we've got to decide, listen, we're going to resist the devil. And if we flee from sin, 
and run to God, Satan will flee from us. And this will happen. So you want to uh, make sure that you want to just, you know, resist that devil. And don't, if you get tempted, don't dwell on that temptation. Just push it out right away. Don't let it stay there for any more seconds. Not, not, not any more seconds. I won't say a minute. Not any more seconds. Just push it right out. If a, if a silly thought, and I'll say silly because I won't just say a nasty thought because some people then just narrow that down too far. Just silly thoughts sometimes. Uh, thoughts that Christ would not think, but they're silly. Uh, they're immature a lot of times. Or thinking like the world does and so on. Uh, please, and like Lord says, say this now, let's not forget this. Okay, listen. If you're born again, your citizenship, your citizenship is in heaven. That is your primary citizenship. Oh, yes, you might be an American or Canadian, whatever, so on. And right now we're, we're broadcasting from the United States. Yes, I am an American citizen. Yes, I have my rights. But listen now. That does not overpower my duties as a born-again Christian. And so, and my attitude. i got to watch my attitude. If you're going to take a stand, watch that attitude. Be very meek and so on. And be directed by God's Holy Spirit. So let's go back to the various pieces that Satan might take one by one here. And there's more than what we just mentioned. But the first one we're going to go back to is our mind. And let me see if I can find that first. Once again, excuse me as I move forward. All right. First one's going to be in Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right. Do not be conformed to this world. Your, your mind needs to be renewed, okay, by the Holy Spirit and by the person of Christ within you. It needs to be renewed all the time. Uh, a lot of times once we get saved, we, we think worldly, but we don't realize it. And we say worldly things, and we don't realize it a lot of times. And part of the problem is we're not in the God's Word. We don't know what God's Word says. And so uh, we, we, we begin to talk like the world, act like the world, and that needs to go. And we need to have our minds renovated by God's Holy Spirit and stop thinking like the world. I'm going to get them back, or whatever. Uh just different things. What was it? Oh, some about this roof out here, by the way. And I don't know what they meant by this, but I'm not going to lie to our insurance company. They said, uh, "Well, you know, you can just." It was it was somebody else who was on uh, that prime message and so on. They said, "Well, you know, uh, you can uh, have the insurance pay for that." Well, I said, "Well, the deductibles is higher than what it's going to cost." Well, it's going to cost a lot to fix that. No, it's not. Go look at it, and so on. And then, but well, he says, well, you can still fix the, uh, you can still fix the uh, the claim by the uh, uh, the contractor. You know, he he could fix that, and so on. No, no, just tell the truth. Yeah. Just tell the truth, okay? It, 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 you know, I'm not going to do stuff like that. And you, if you're born a Christian, don't you do that either? So don't think like the world. Oh, here's one. Okay, listen, it, when you work with the government a lot of times, let me get me back on camera so you don't have to look at them. Of course, these flowers look better than me. <laughs> Keep the flowers on. <laughs> but anyhow, when you work with the government sometimes, here's back, let's put it this way, here's back, Cornerstone got a grant to uh, teach about nutrition and uh, what was it? money. Nutrition of money, M and M's, okay, M and N's, and so uh, we we did that. We got a five hundred dollar grant, but I saw that as time goes on, if you keep doing this, the government is going to make certain stipulations that go against biblical stance. Go go against the biblical biblical stance at times, and so you know what? They can keep their money. They can keep their money. Amen. If God wants me to do something, it's not going to be with strings attached from the government. So if I do something and so on, I'm not going to 
you know, be forced by the government. Well, you're taking our money. You got to do it this way now. No way. No way. If somebody wanted to teach, for example, let my breath shut up. That's going off the deep end here. Let me go on here because time is rolling away. But your mind. So uh, let your mind be renewed that you may show, may prove what is the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. And that's a learning process, of course. And so let your mind be transformed by the Holy Spirit to think like he thinks. Don't let the world come in. Don't let the government tell you how to think or denominations and so on, fellowships and so on. Oh, no one about unity. Every now and then i got to mention that fact. I might have to do one online about unity and so on. But uh, people say the body of Christ needs to band together. we got to drop all these denominational tags and all that. And I'll tell you right now, the moment you start playing in that realm, you're going into compromise. You're going into compromise. I'll tell you right now, there is true unity within the true body of Christ. And it all begins with a person's relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Are they united with the Lord like they should be according to God's word? Now, in that case, then, it doesn't, well, I got Presbyterian friends and I got Baptist friends. And they have good chicken. And I got Baptist friends and so on. Uh, Baptist brothers, Presbyterian brothers and so on. And the thing is, listen now, if they're born again, if they're saved, they're my brother and sister of Christ. But I don't, I'm not out to say, okay, let's have the Baptists and, let me see, the Presbyterians just come together, drop your de denominational tag and so on and all that, and just have one big mass and so on. Listen, that's another word, one big mass. Listen, this is, this is what's going to happen in Revelation chapter 17. Please read that very carefully. Let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart and look at the signs of times. When we first came to Cambridge, uh, there was that term, tear down the walls, tear down the walls. My friend, walls are good. Walls are good. All right? Bear that in mind. So you don't want to go along that line of unity and then start compromising. you got to stick with God's word and go on that straight and narrow path. Now, the next thing, of course, we talked about the mind. Uh, next thing is going to be about the soul. And that's going to be over in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 2. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Well, I like to have a little, you know, a good meal and so on. And, and a lot of people like to have a good meal. This is good, but a lot of times people, now some people make a focus of this, and don't do that. Now you want to set your mind upon things above, uh, and uh, I gotta have the latest vehicle. I gotta have the latest technology and so on. Uh, I usually wait myself to see what comes out, and let people <laughs> learn how to use it, so I uh, learn to use it later on. But the thing is, people, you know, they, they focus upon earthly things. And my friend, all this can be gone in a moment of time. Of course, fashion. A lot of times people look at fashion, so I got to have the latest clothes. I didn't mention that, but I'll mention it now. Uh, they have to have the latest clothes uh, and, and so on, and the latest be the latest style. And listen, that changes quite rapidly. It used to change like every two or three years. And then I noticed that closer to our time it started changing every year and now it seems like it changes every three or four months you know why people want to make money that's why they want to make money so uh now we want to set our minds upon things above and what does god want god wants to see souls saved also the souls that are saved god wants to see that they stay saved and uh, so we want to have those two things primarily in our heart and in our mind. So uh, that's what we're after. And so we want to set our minds in such a way. So, uh, and our soul really, in this case our soul. Uh, sometimes these things are interchangeable, of course. But the soul is the place of reflections. What I like, what you desire, and so on. Uh, and so we have got to set our minds, our souls upon things above, not of the things of earth. Now, in the case of Peter uh, rebuking Jesus, once again, they're thinking, look, we need this 
ruling Messiah right now. And besides, he's a great man. He shouldn't have to be tortured and so on. But they all missed the point that Messiah came, first of all, to take away my sin, your sin, and that we might become the righteous of God in him. So they lost sight of that fact. Now, we mentioned the nose last time. Let's get to the nose now. And uh, we want toward that. We just had a study in 1 John. And so please listen to those recordings online. But for this, we want to go to 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Amen. Yes, indeed. So look at that. Now, what does the word God say? You test the spirits. And we have a whole passel of teachers and preachers and pastors saying, Oh, you don't want to judge. You're supposed to do this, my friend. You're supposed to test the spirits. How you test the spirits? Well, listen to that recording. I go in more in depth on that. Uh, so we did a whole recording. I'd say maybe two. Uh, because you got, first of all, the foundations know God's word. Know the word of God. So the moment someone starts talking not like the word of God, then lo and behold, uh, you know something's not right. Something's not right. And, uh, so you got to be very careful. One time somebody was trying to counsel me, quote, unquote, counsel me. And then they started talking about the Civil War. No, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear about the Word of God. You counsel me in the Word of God. Now, they might be might have been using the Civil War as an example. But I want to hear from this man, which at that time was my superior, you might say. He was my superior in the sense of God. I want to hear from the Word of God. Don't tell me. You know, this stuff about the Civil War. Uh, so you tell, you know, you, if you want to rebuke me and so on, and why I should stay at that church longer than I did, uh, then give me scripture and so on. And uh, so don't talk about the Civil War. But people will do that. So what, talk about our people over us. One time, we were at another location. Another superior said, you know, we were having problems with the, uh, what should I say, the water coming down from a mountain. It was getting into the church, so we were supposed to put in a, a drain pipe underneath the ground. That was my job, <laughs> and so on. Amongst all the other things I got to do, put that ground pipe in there. And uh, so another a superior came along. I won't, it was a presbyter, and so on. And I said about the gas lines, just wonder where they're at. He said, well, you, you take a branch and start witching, witching. What? Yeah, he you get a branch and, and so on, and you start looking for that way. What? And also, this this guy also told me one time, but you want to get rid of some people in the area, just play rock music. What? Listen now. Come on now. This is not scripture. I mean, I've heard stuff like this. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I've heard stuff like this over the years, and they don't speak according to this. Don't listen to them, my friend. Listen to God's Holy Spirit. And you are to test the spirits. You are to try them. Don't let people say you're not supposed to judge. You are to judge in that realm. You are to test. If you do not do that, you are avoiding your responsibility. And you need, by all means, to go ahead and to try and test the spirits. But like I said before, foundationally, it is the Word of God. You've got to know God's Word to, to know when someone is going off the deep end. You even slap me off. All right, so you got to know God's word. And then how about our eyes? Well, I have for that Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. And let me bring that up for you. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 to 2. And this is from the New American Standard Translation, the knockouts from the archaic language and so on. Uh, once again, I'm not in favor of the NASB, but in this case, we'll use it. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, 
Let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. How? Fixing our eyes on Jesus. This is how you get your eyes straightened out. Don't fix it on the world. Don't fix it on problems. Don't fix it on politics. There's going to be a lot of that between now and November. Don't fix it on this stuff. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, how do you take care of your spiritual eyes? You want to fix your eyes upon Jesus Christ and keep them there. Now, we mentioned this before, and we'll mention it again and again. This is why some of the accounts were in there in God's Word. For example, when Peter was looking at the winds and the waves, he began to sink. He was walking on water with Jesus. At first. He's, he's walking to Jesus, okay? And But he begins to look in the wrong direction, the winds and the waves, and begins to sink. Let's not do that. So, listen, there's going to be a lot of talk about politics and policy and so on. And there's so many distractions nowadays. So many ministers and pastors and so on have gotten taken up in this Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter movement and so on. That's no, no movement to get taken up of. No, my friend. Listen, be directed by God's Holy Spirit. Far too many people, ministers or not, uh, ministers or non-ministers, far too many people are being moved around by the wind of the world. And we just so many events like that. And so listen, now you want to fix your eyes upon Jesus and run that race. Make sure you spend quality time. In fact, maybe you might want to increase your quality time with Jesus as we get closer to the rapture. That'd be a great idea, right? Just increase your time. And you can do that. Some of you can do that. Now, some might have trouble with fasting and so on. And I recommend fasting, whereby you take the time you would be eating and spending that time in the presence of God somehow in some way, in the Word of God and so on. And so you want to do these things, and that that be a great idea uh, before the Lord comes back. But the thing is, we want to really focus up our eyes upon Jesus Christ and to run that race. And just don't stop. Just keep moving forward to the Lord. Now, also, uh, we said that Satan would like to get your body, too, somehow, in some way. And I have I have one scripture. We'll have another one from Romans in a little bit here. Uh, but first of all, if you come under attack like that, so on, number one, uh, you might want to see, ask God, am I, do I have this medical problem or illness because of something I need to take care of my life? It might be taking care of your body better. Because if you don't take care of your body properly, that's a sin. That's a sin. God knows I've <laughs> God knows I've sinned along that line quite often. I've got some teeth missing. So uh, other things too. So God knows I've done that. And but there's certain things I you know that I didn't ask for that came along genetically in my eyes, okay? Uh near side and so on. Uh, just different things happen like that. So uh but ask the Lord. But the thing is, look at, you know, the last part of Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. I am Yavah, who heals you. I am the great I am. I am, I am, who heals you. Yavah Rapha. He is your healer. So you go to him for that. And listen to him primarily. Now sometimes the doctors mean well. And they want to get us on this medication and that medication, so on. And you now you listen to the Lord. And if the Holy Spirit says go for it, you go for it. But otherwise, be very careful because one medication sometimes leads to another. You develop side effects. Okay, we'll give you this to take care of those side effects. Now you got more side effects, so on. And sometimes stuff builds up in your body. I'm not saying don't take medicine. I'm saying listen to what God says to your heart and to your mind. So listen to him. Listen to God's Holy Spirit. But also now, uh, to help our bodies, to help our temples, 
uh, we need to really offer them as a sacrifice before the Lord at all times. And for that, we have Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. Hallelujah. Your whole bodies. You present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, of course, here in this graph, we have people praising and worshiping God. And that's one way to do it, yes. Uh, when you start doing that, like I said sometime back, I have trouble raising my hands before God. But listen, now you're giving him your all, you can say. Your bodies, your soul, body, and spirit, and so on. You're giving him your all when you're doing this. And your body comes into play, whereby you just worship the Lord and you magnify his name. But also, this passage in Romans, basically, is that no, no matter what we do throughout the day, we should offer our bodies a living sacrifice. So let's say a brother or sister is just a little bit tempted with pornography or maybe or politics or something like that and so on. You, know, you got to tell your body, listen, no, no, no mind, no eyes. Oh, no, we're not going to do this. No, hands, you're not going to pick up that book. Hands, you're not going to go to that spot on the internet and so on. You're not going to do that. You offer your body a living sacrifice to the Lord. Why? Because you love Him. You love Him. If you're saved, you ought to love Him. And so you offer your body a living sacrifice uh, before Him. And so, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. Amen. And then also, let's get to the heart right now. And I have that. That's over in Matthew chapter 22 Matthew 22 verse 37 Jesus said to him love you shall love your God your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind now we got the soul and mind there but now we got the heart amen listen if you love your God your God with all your heart there is no room for anything else. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, understand this. Now, let's talk about family for a minute. Family is important, yes. But you should love God most of all. <laughs> you know, people say, I love my granddaughter. I love my grandson with all my heart. But what about, listen, no, that, all my heart belongs to Jesus. That's how I look at it. So I, I don't even want to talk that way. I love my grandchildren. I love my children. Amen? Don't you love your grandchildren? <laughs> you wish they were here. <laughs> but you love them, but you don't love them with all your heart. That's for Jesus. Amen? See, this is what I mean. We, we talk like the world. I've said that before years back, I'm sure. But we talk like the world. we got to stop talking like the world. Because if we start talking like the world, then that means we're thinking like the world. And we're going to get caught into snares and traps. And we just don't want that. Just, and we don't need that. We don't need any more toils and snares and traps so on. And, of course, we want to keep our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And we refer to this passage so often. It's very important. And let's look now at John chapter 15, 1 to 6. I am the tree vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. We're having a grand time in the studio there. <laughs> you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch, and is withered. And they gather them, and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Doesn't that sound like you can lose your salvation? Some people say you can, because Jesus said, he will never leave you nor forsake you. This is true. But you can leave him. 
you know, no parent, no, no godly parent would, or godly or loving parent would would leave, would abandon their child. This is true, but there's been children that have left godly and loving parents. They just walked away, okay? and as a result, they've gone out of their care, and some have run into disaster. And so uh, there's an example right there. Listen, Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. That doesn't mean you're saved forever. You've got to remain in that vine. you got to remain in him. And it's up to you and me to do that. Now, we have many friends out there, brothers and sisters in Christ, that are Calvinists and so on. Uh, don't listen. To that. <laughs> Please don't listen to that stuff, okay? They, they kind of mean well, but the thing is that they have a perspective on the scripture that, I certainly do not have. I never did have. Because I moment, the moment I got saved, I realized I need to stay in Christ. I need to walk close to Him. I don't want to go away from Him. I need to be very careful and stay in Him. And so uh, this is the attitude that you and I need to have. We want to stay in Christ at all times. And so if you're saved, please do not let Satan have any peace of you whatsoever. Okay? Yeah. Uh, and who just try to take your mind, try to take your soul, try to take your discernment. Oh, you can't judge. <laughs> oh, listen now. We are to discern. Don't listen to these people out there that say, you can't discern. That's a biggie nowadays, okay? And so don't let Satan get a hold of your spiritual eyes and, and then affect your body and so on, affect your heart, and then just take you away from Jesus. Satan wants a piece of you and me, and even more. He wants your entire relationship with Christ taken away, and he wants you and, and me in his clutches. Don't let that happen, my friend. And Father, we pray, Lord, for those that are watching and know Christ. We pray to, that you help each of us to stay within you, stay within that vine. Help us, Lord, to grab a hold of you, never let go. And help us, Lord, to always love you with our whole heart, so am I. And to not walk away, but ever hold tightly to your hand, ever cling to you very tightly. And help us, Lord, to keep purging ourselves and cleansing ourselves by the power of your Holy Spirit and the direction of the Holy Spirit, that your name might be magnified and glorified in this earth. And friend, if you do not have Christ as your Savior, you are in Satan's clutches already. You don't know it, perhaps. But you're in Satan's clutches. In fact, when I was a Satanist, I knew I was, you know, but I was on Satan's side. But I thought that was okay. You, you could not pray. I was crazy. All right, amen. You have, you have to be a little bit off to be a Satanist, my friend. Okay, and so that's how I was. But thank God, He saved me by His mercy. Amen. He got by, by His hand, by His mighty hand. He got me out of that mess. Praise God. And it took some time, but by his grace, I got to have it. But listen, so, but most people are not Satanists like that. They think they're okay and all that. But if you're not born again, if you don't have Christ in your heart, Satan has you already. And so, listen, friend, you want to get out of the clutches. You want to leave the realm of darkness and come into light. Would you want to receive Christ right now as your Savior and King? If you do so, please pray this prayer. I mean, Father, forgive me. I am a sinner. I ask Christ to come in. I surrender all that I have to him. I give my all. Father, help me, Lord, to live for you, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. If you have prayed that prayer and have meant it, like we said before, on the internet, please listen to the recording, Seven Roots for Growth of Christ. And that's a recording on there in various portions of the internet. Also, please take the course, Basic Elements of Christianity. That's at sapphirestreams.com forward slash B-E-C forward slash. And that's up on in it right now. Praise God. It's still there. Hallelujah. By God's grace. And now before we go, we want to pray for these needs around the world. Sorry this video took over an hour. It's going to take over an hour. But it was necessary. We made some mistakes, but that's okay. But the first one is from where? Iran. So let's pray for Iran. Iran. Intelligence agents from Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard arrested 12 Christians in court coordinated operations on Tuesday 
June 30, and Wednesday, July 1st. The agents first raided the home of a recent Christian convert in western Tehran on June 30, arresting six of the approximately 30 Christians present. The agents then went to the homes of three other Christian converts for whom they had arrest warrants and arrested them. Finally, the following morning, they arrested three more Christians in the city, and local Christians believed the raids were coordinated with the help of an informant who had infiltrated the group in the previous month. Jesus, I just pray for these yes. Christians that have recently accepted you as uh, their personal Savior. I pray that you might help them to remain strong. I pray that you might help them to know that you're there with them and through this. But I pray also for the government that you might help them to release these Christians, that they might be free. Uh, but I thank you that they are free because they have accepted yeah. you in, in that way. I just pray that you might just help them to um, remain in you and to also to be a testimony to others. This we ask in your name and for your sake. Amen. I have China. China is a hotbed for persecution along with Eritrea and other places, too. On June 11th, authorities in China's Fujian, Fujian province destroyed more than a dozen Christian homes that had been used as worship spaces by members of the Ziguang Church. At 9 a.m., more than 100 officials from various government departments arrived at the Christians' homes, dragged furniture from the homes, into the hallways and proceeded to destroy the furniture while preventing the Christians from using cell phones to take video, take videos of the destruction. The this, the church was initially shut down in on May 3rd in the May 3rd raid, in which police entered a residence by force and beat church members. During that raid, neighbors took video of, of police officers sh shouting and beating the Christians. Please pray for members of the Ziang Church and for all Chinese Christians. Father, we do pray for these church members that you undergird them by your spirit. Father, help them, Lord, to send your guidance direction and in these matters. We pray for the police officers and the Chinese authorities that you soften their hearts. Probably they're, they're kicking at the pricks like Paul did. And no doubt Satan within them realizes that his time is short. But, Father, you are mightier than that. We ask, O oh God, that you soften those hearts, draw them to you. We pray for other Christians in China that are being persecuted and elsewhere, too, India and Eritrea, other places, too, Turkey and so on. We pray, O oh God, that you undergird them by your spirit. Each time we lay down in bed, Father, in this country, many of us lay down in comfort and peace and, and solitude. But there's many people around the world that lay down in dirt and bugs and, and stones and so on and in the elements of the, of the weather and so on. And sometimes there are nasty cells and just different things like that. And Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters that you just help them Lord, set your comfort and peace and just draw them to you and meet that need, we pray. And Father, we pray for those that need a touch of body. We thank you, like we read before, that you are Yavah Rapha. You are Yavah that heals us. And we thank you for that. Help us, Lord, look to you for what we need. And not, to, not just to be healed physically, but also spiritually. Help us, Lord, grow in you at all times. For that person that's struggling with a terrible problem at this time, Father, give him or her, Lord, help them receive them. And help them to receive instruction from you. Help them to hear your voice, Father. And help them, Lord, to follow through by the direction of the Holy Spirit. And meet that need, we pray. Father, for that one, those people going through a domestic domestic problem at this time, probably a, a spouse problem, basically, we ask, oh God, that you just help them, Lord, to listen to your voice, and we pray that you bind up for Satan. Father, keep husband and wife together, we pray, and that your name might be magnified in this earth. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for watching. Sorry it took this long, but that happens and so on. Over an hour length, but sorry about that. We have a few technical problems, different things like that. But that's okay, amen? Amen. At least we kept on going with God's word. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Well, the Lord's coming back. Amen. amen. And we're looking for his coming. 
And for that, we shout, Maranatha! Amen!